And we'll go ahead and uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this glorious day that you've given us. Um, every day that you make is a blessing and opportunities to grow closer to you and do the ministries you've called us to be here on this earth, busy about your business. And Father, as we do come before you, we do ask that you forgive us of any trespasses, anything that would hinder us from receiving all it is that you have for us. Father, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts to receive you. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit to overflowing. And Lord God, let us see you uh, deeper and grow to know you more through today's study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, if you could um, go ahead and open up your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 13. And I'm going to do an inductive study, or uh, not as inductive, I'm going to do what's called a survey of this one because there are, as you saw in the note I sent, uh, fit over 50 verses, so we, we don't have time to cover most of these. But I want to recap it so that you can go back and read it later and have a good understanding of what's going on here. And it's, it's a continuation of the, the last chapter in the um, diseases and the things that can come upon the body that can cause harm not only to the body, it, it, to the point of death, actually, uh, but also, as we learned last, last week, is bad company corrupts good character, but some of the diseases that can come upon a human being can actually uh, bring harm not just to you, but to others, right? And so the, the, the primary disease that's talked about here in this chapter is leprosy. And um, yet it's not specific to just leprosy. It is mentioned as leprosy, but the word that's used here is actually many, can, can be um, used to, to determine many different kinds of skin diseases or orders. And I kind of want, I almost was going to entitle this this um, study skin deep, but I thought it was much more than that. I, so I entitled it um, um, frequent frequent checkups or daily daily e examination. And the reason why is, as you're going to see, as you go through these scripture verses, um, there's an examination of the skin by the priest. Whenever there was something that would be on that skin on on uh, one of the Israelites' skin, it would have to be examined by the priest. And so. Um, I, I end up, uh, when I was young, I was in the military and I had a mandatory fun day and I put on some what I thought was suntan <laughs> lotion, but it actually um, was sun enhancer. And I didn't realize it until I looked down and I saw that my skin was the same color as my red tank top and I said, okay, that's not good. And later that evening, I had blisters all across both my shoulders and my neck and, and it was, um, the doctor said, actually third, second degree burns. And mm -hmm. ever since then, I've had many moles that come up. So I have to go to the doctor every year, get my moles checked, and make sure they're not cancer and this, that, and the other thing. And, and we go to, many of you go to your doctor for physicals once a year, you know, to get checked out. And the reason we're doing that is because there's things you may not see that are there. And this is exactly what's going on with these people that sometimes you may see something, but you don't understand the gravity <laughs> of what it is you're seeing on your skin. And, and so these are... Um, checkups to ensure that there's something that's not going to go deeper and we need to do this as we're examining ourselves that there's that you may have things in your life that seem harmless but you've got telltale signs of something and you need to go to the word of god to dig a little bit deeper to see where whether this is something that's harmful to you obviously sinful that digs more deeper than just a superficial sin that you think you're doing sin can often hide itself manifest itself and root itself and go deeper like um i hate to get kind of gross in some of this stuff but when we talk about skin skin things it can get a little gross but there's moles sometimes or i'm sorry warts that sometimes people will get and it seems harmless but then it actually roots itself deep down in and you have to get that wart medicine and put it on or freeze it and dig it out yeah and so um, we, we, we want to be somebody who's examining ourselves all the time when we think of spiritual sin and sin that can, that can harm us. And so James chapter 1 verse 23 says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man that beholdeth himself in the glass or in the mirror and then walks away and doesn't <laughs> recognize there's something to deal with. So this is a, a, a way for us to examine. Every time we come to a Bible study, every time we come to a sermon, every time we open up the Word of God, the Bible says it's like bringing on a light. You know, sometimes they'll come, like I said, with the skin, the skin cancer, and they, they put a UV light on, and they can see something if it's there, cancerous or not, or you know, at least something that should be examined deeper. We come to the Word of God to let ourselves be examined 
deeper than we normally would, than we could see. Because it's not our light, it's the light of God, isn't it? The Bible tells us that he's a, a, a light unto us, the Lord God, and he shows us where there's sin. The Holy Spirit is one that convicts us of this sin and draws us closer to God. And as we draw closer, we can see where we're out of order, where normally we wouldn't. We can be deceived in our own minds. The Bible says that pride creeps in and pride blinds us. And so there's things that we want to always be drawing close to God and in his word to ensure that we're getting out those things that can become more harmful or contagious to others. Um, so the first verses, 1 through 8, in this chapter, talk about examining the skin. And, and as I said, this is not just leprosy, which is grave. You know, leprosy in its fullness actually can cause the skin to rot and limbs to fall off. It's quite hideous. It's horrible. It's painful. There's many, many things, and actually it can, it can take away some pain until it falls off, you know, and so you don't even realize it's happening until it's too late. Uh, but the Hebrew word does not exactly correspond to the word leprosy, at least not in this part of this chapter. Um, it's rather a general term that perhaps can include ringworm. Some people can get, you know, that. That's quite painful, and it, and it can get big, ringworm, and then it spreads, or psoriasis, or uh, Lucidumra, which is a type, you know, of cancer. And then obviously, yes, Hansen's disease, which is also another term for leprosy. Um, so, so this is what they're ex getting examined for. And there's other things that could come, you know, precursors to other diseases or other more detrimental to your life things that can come through skin um, uh, imperfections and or blisters or or um, pimples or things like that that seen it like smallpox or measles or scarlet fever uh, these are conditions that they can be if caught sooner we can prevent right nowadays we know it's like grab grab it and take care of it quickly but these also are things that can cause us to kind of crawl away and hide right when somebody has a skin lesion or something like that and especially if it's in a place that others can see we rather than get it dealt with rather than have it you know um, cut out if it's a cancer on your head. Sometimes people will 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 try to hide, will try to hide and isolate themselves. And and so the priest's job at this time was to find out who had these things, and so that it wouldn't get exposed into the rest of the community. And so they would be examining them and all kinds of things. And and what's the idea here is to to nip it in the bud or catch it before it spreads deeper. And then verse. Um, 9 through 11 goes into specific parts of, of swollen sores or, or moles that they would check it. And, and every single one of these, they would examine the skin in a meticulous way that the Lord showed them to do. And as they checked it, they would look for gray hair that would come out of it, or they would look for a sore that then would grow bigger. So they would send them away for seven days and see if it came back. And when they came back, did it go away? Was, there, was it worse? Did it go deeper? Then the skin, is it, you know, in other words, deeper than skin deep? Was it something that could be washed off or no? This isn't something that can be washed off. This isn't something that the body's naturally going to heal. This is something that's going that's dug down deep underneath the skin protection and now is getting into your body, the very core. Um, and, and this is sores. Um, and verses 12 through 17 is it's not enough to examine just the things that are obvious to us. And we're gonna get into another part that they examine, but we wanna examine the whole body. We wanna examine our whole walk with God in the word. There's things that we're doing that, that we don't think are harmful, that could be much more harmful. So we wanna examine every part of our being. You know, we talked about bad company corrupts good character, but there could be people in your life that you're allowing in or that you're, that, that you're compromising that are causing harm that you don't realize that's going deeper. They, they may get you to question your faith. They may get you to question, did you know, kind of like Satan, did God really say this? And they may start to get you to stumble in areas you may not even know. So you want to always examine your, your wholeness of your life. You know, the Bible says to, to love the Lord with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy strength, right? So with every part of our being, we want to make it be an open book to God. We want to make sure that we're even letting him into those secret places. The, one of the gravest things that we're sin can get to is when we have a hidden sin. It's sin that's done in darkness. You know, I always say this to people and some, some of the guys sometimes is nothing good happens after dark. You know, when you go into that dark place, wherever it is, or when you allow sin into that dark place, it's going to have a, an effect on you. 
And so we want to bring God into every component of our lives. We want to bring the light and examine the, with the word of God every part of our heart. There could be bitterness. This is one of the, the masked ones. Or when something bad happens to us, we can, get, we can have unforgiveness and anger. And the Lord says, You're got, you have anger, but sin not. So this can be areas that, that we need to have examined. And so as they would examine these people from these physical things that could happen, he would send them away for seven days. And then they would come back. And if they got worse, sometimes they would send them away for another seven days just to make sure. And then, and then he would say, okay, you're considered unclean. And of course, there's the examining of, of the whole body and, and um, that there would be many, many lingering signs uh, for infection. Like, like some, some people would come back and, 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 and they would say that they would have, okay, a sign of whiteness. But then after a while, their whole body would turn white and the whole body would have this weird white color to them. And they would think, okay, well, that's okay because it's, 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 it's believe it or not, run its course and so sometimes there's people in our lives that that in other words it didn't dig deeper didn't go below the sin even though it's discolored your entire body it's you you have an effect of whatever happened to you some people have this effect of um of covid that that they have heart problems or they're having different issues the covid's no longer there but they have a residual of the sin that was in their life or whatever this this disease was but they're not unclean to people they're no longer contagious and so so what what he's saying is it shows if as you go into the scripture verses between uh, 12 and 17 it says if they're completely white then they're 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 not unclean it's okay and we have people today that have you know premature aging due to the sin that they've been party to. And we can try to judge them and we can try to isolate them or because they have you know, tattoos from a time previous in their life that they can't get rid of or they've scarred up because of that and, and they may be like demonic type tattoos and we can start to judge people prematurely on that. We shouldn't, right? This is not, this is a, a, a leftover from a past life that they were but they're not unclean. They're clean because they've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. They may have battle fatigue you know, you may have scars uh, that you have in your life from previous wars. And sometimes these scars aren't scars that necessarily we see physically, you know, on a face or, or on our arm. But they could be scars that the, that, 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 that the PTSD is a good example. There's things that have gone on in their life that, that they're, they're, more, they're more sensitive. They're more, they're, they're more susceptible. They're more to light or to whatever, to sound. It doesn't make them unclean. It doesn't make them evil. It doesn't make them contagious to spread things against God. It just means that they have effects of the sin that's been put upon them or that they've done in their life. So we need to be very good, sensitive about that as we're using the light of God to examine the whole bodies of ourselves. We should also be applying the grace and mercies that God's put on, on others and see as someone in entangled in sin now or is this just a result of what's happened to them in their lives so this is you know a, another thing is they come back and their body's completely white he would say they're they're they are they are um clean it's okay leave them alone and in verse 18 through 23 it talks about examining boils that pop up you know things that, that, that are showing signs of a sickness that's in you sometimes we can get cold sores in our mouth and, and it's a sign that you're fighting something or a boil on your back, you know, because your body's fighting something that's inside. That doesn't mean that you're not clean, that you're not resisting sin and that you're not, you're not fighting the good fight. But it does mean that you're in, you're in danger. It does mean that you may be in a place that you shouldn't be in and, and you need to come out of there. You know, you're struggling. You're, you're, you're in severe depression. And, and instead of looking to the Lord for your strength, you're leaning on your own. And there could be some, there's, there could be some sin that's going to come later. So, so we need to watch out for these boils, you know, and things that pop up that are manifesting. So they'll send them away again. See, will, is this really something that's just a temporary illness or sickness? Is this somebody, so they come to church, I, I, I hate to say this, you know, we never, God forbid, we wouldn't want it. And I would, I would say something if someone came to church drunken or high or in a state that's not in their right mind. Of course, we're a hospital. We would want them to stay. We wouldn't judge them right away. We would, we would warn them, right? And say, hey, don't, this is a place of God. This is a place of holiness, clean. And so this may not be a permanent thing for them, right? Mm -hmm. If it is, we would sit along and we would come alongside and help as best we can, right? And so this is, this is something they would send them away for seven days 
to go get clean again and, and go get spiritually clean and then, and then come back and check it out. Is there a gray hair in there or is this starting to, to grow deeper into their body? Are they literally having mm. something that could be terminal? Okay, you know, now they're considered unclean in the Old Testament. And, and, and it says in the verses from 24 to 28, it's examining a burn, something that can happen to us because of our walking around or even accidental, we got burned. But there is a scripture verse that's very that, that we should all heed and take warning. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27, it says, Can a man take fire to his bosom and to his clothes and not be burned? Uh, can one um, go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth to his neighbor's wife to commit adultery or to take what's not yours, covetous and things like that. Whoso touches shall not be innocent. So there could be a burning of ourselves that's a spiritual thing that we could get when we put upon ourselves that, that could make us unclean. And so, yes, this is talking about a physical burn and there could be a fire, but that burn could be susceptible to what? Disease. Infection, right? A lot of times people that get severe burns on them don't die because of the burn itself, but because of the secondary infections that can come from these burns. Mm -hmm. So the priest would examine. And remember, who are they coming to? They're coming to this intermediary who's been ordained by God to examine the fruits of God, to examine the peoples of God, to examine the sacrifices of God and bring those sacrifices before the Lord to make sure they're holy. But what is the most number one thing that needs to be holy? Not yeah. just our sacrifices, but us. us, right? And so this is what this is why there's this examination of the people who are bringing and making sure they're the vessels of God and, and they're coming in holiness, they're coming in cleanness. And of course, these are outward things, but God's really concerned about the inward things. And verse 29 through 37, it, it talks about um, sores in the hair, hidden sin. Again, you know, there's your hair may cover up one of these sores that you have so they would literally examine i remember when i was a kid it was horrible you would hear news that somebody had come in the school with lice oh. so we all had to go to the nurse's office and and the nurse would sift through your head and you were and they would say well you won't see the lice because they're so quick they're so fast but what you, what you will see is the 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 evidence that there was lice here or is lice by the eggs that stick to your hair and so they'd have these little magnifying glasses looking for the eggs and mm -hmm. and so this is the priest would look and see deeper below are there sores that are hidden? Are there things that are that could potentially be contagious hidden? And so they would examine the hair. And Numbers um, 20, 32 verse 23 says, But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against you. Uh, you have sinned against the Lord, and you can be sure your sins will find you out. So there's sometimes things we're doing in the darkness that we think is hidden that will come to the surface. And it can manifest itself in many different ways. And, and even in a church as a pastor, I watch and I see people and, I, and, and there's people who think they're, they're doing things that I don't see. And, and yet the Lord has given me discernment through the word of God that I can see the character and the heart of them. They're struggling. They're in, they're, 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 there's things going on within them that they think they're hidden. And then all of a sudden stuff pops, pops up and, and, and I see it. And I'm like, whoa, you know what? I didn't go looking to see if people are sinning. But the Lord makes us aware of things. They come to the surface. And it's like, rather than be ashamed and, and, and hide and go clean and get rid of this, sometimes you can walk in arrogance thinking it's hidden and nobody sees it, but God sees it. Even if the pastor doesn't see it. Even if your brothers and sisters don't see it. You know what's sad is sometimes the world will see it, even before you. And you're walking in your walk, and you're walking and telling people about Jesus Christ, and you're walking in your victory, and yet your own, your own family or even the heathens will come and they'll rebuke you. And they will say, aren't you supposed to be a Christian? You know, it reminds me of, of, um, of Peter, you know, tough guy Peter who was going to defend the Lord. And the Lord tells him, you're going to rebuke, you're, you're going to deny me, Peter. You're sitting here saying you're going to be a tough guy. You're chopping off ears. And, and before the, the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And what does he do? He denies the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he's what? Warming himself at the fire. And he denies the Lord and then runs away you know, after the third time as he looks at the face. And who was watching the whole time? Jesus. Jesus. And he looked at him. As, he's being, as Jesus is being mocked and beaten and you're going to stand up for Christ and here you are being a testimony to Jesus Christ when you've got this hidden sin but it's going to come to the surface. And so they examine the hair 
and they check and say, okay, is this, is this clean? Is this unclean? Same thing. Go away seven days, come back seven days. Let's see. And, and, and then, then there's the examining of the bright spots at first, um, in verse 38 through 39, at first, the examination appears to be, um, not normal. It seems to be something that is, that is a blemish on somebody, but there's some people who have pigment, pigment issues. They have, you know, white spots. That's not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with this person. There, this is, this is just something that's, that, that happens to the body sometimes, right? A, a white blemish. And so, uh, but someone could again be misunderstood. I think this is a perfect example. We come here and we come to the DePaul and we see people that the Bible, or the Bible, the, 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 the world has, has put a stigma on. You have a mental illness. You're not this or you're that. And, and so you may think you're lesser because of this mental illness that someone's put on you when you're not lesser at all. As a matter of fact, many of you are closer to God because you've given your heart to God than many people out there who are sober, quote unquote, minded, right? Mm -hmm. In their minds. And so there's, they can be falsely accused. I remember one of the most um, misunderstood person was one of my best friends, Ed Mays right? Yeah. Who would run around and, and he was at first looking for other gods and he was seeking God through many different ways. And he had his, he had his, his, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> little, little lip pierced and, and he had all these things. And, and, and yet he was the most funny guy. And near the end, all he did was preach Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ yeah. and clean. And one of the most misunderstood people, so smart, so funny, hilarious and I, and I love being with him now he's since gone and to be with the Lord thanks be the Lord but how many times do we judge people falsely and and I'm not even talking about judging someone when you're in something I'm talking about making false accusations this person's not in what you think but you think that and so this is this is these white spots on people that you are judging that is not against God at all it's against you and your your preconceived um, notion, your poor perspective, because you see somebody in your pre preconceived notions or your judgments, but you're not looking at them through the light of the Lord. You're not looking at them through God's eyes. So this is they're examining to make sure, and there'll be those things. And then there's the I, I, this one I take uh, near and dear to heart, verse forty and uh, through forty four, is the examination of the loss of hair. And, and sometimes when you have blotches in your hair, you could, it could be due to some kind of a sickness or illness or, or again, ringworm or things like that. So there's, there's things that are causing the hair to fall out that could be a deeper issue, cancer and many other things. And so there could be something there. But then he says, if you see the falling down of the hair of, of, of just in general, evenly, it could just be, um, you know, male pattern baldness. All right. So leave it alone. He even <laughs> talks about having a five head, big foreheads. All right. So mm -hmm. he says that's clean. It's not. They're not unclean. <laughs> leave that alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're okay. So, um, so just because someone's bald doesn't make them, you know, lesser or balding. All right. No. Uh, verse forty-five through forty-nine. It says, "What are the results of this? All of these diseases. What are the results when it does come back finally after the seven days and it's it's found out this is indeed a lethal sin. This is a sin. This is a sin that that, that is that is uh, against um, people and could cause and bring death and could spread like we talked about leaven, the sin of leaven. The leaven spreads throughout the whole loaf, right? This could be something that could be spread throughout the whole camp of Israel, or in this case, each other, the church, and or other people in the world. You're spreading to other people. There's a, what happens is they're isolated. They're sent off and they're said that they cannot commune with the people in the, in, in the Israelites and come to fellowship and come into um, dinner and the communions that we have where we all eat together and touch and hug and greet each other with a holy kiss, and, as the Bible says, and a hug. No, you will have no contact with anybody. As a matter of fact, you'll wear a mask. As it says, it'll be attached to your upper lip and you'll cover your mouth. And through this mask, you will go through the community and you'll make sure you stay at least, at least six feet away from every human being. And you will say, unclean, 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 wherever you go. Some of you may be saying unclean, unclean, and unclean. And, and you may be saying this for good reason because somewhere in your heart, you're, you know you're doing things that are against God. And so you've pulled away almost like, almost like um, Adam and Eve as they ran away from God in fellowship. And they covered themselves and they hid. And God said to them, who told you you're naked? Who told you this? And so 
this sin has come upon you and maybe you have shame and maybe you have guilt and maybe it's for good reason. Maybe because you're, you, you know what you've done and you know what you're doing is causing harm to others. Maybe this is for good reason. But God always desires you to come to him, the high priest. Come to the priest to be examined. But we come to a priest, not of the Arianic and not of the Leviticus, but we come to a priest of, who, is the, who is also happens to be the savior of the world, happens to be the son of God, whoever makes intercession on behalf of us, who doesn't only examine you and all of your sin to show you your sin, to be the light of the world, but also comes with the inoculation, also comes with the solution, also comes with the, with the, with the, um, the, the cure. Jesus doesn't only examine and leave us to, to hope for healing, to be isolated, to, to, to be in condemnation, but he exposes it so that we can come to him in repentance to call it sin, but then ask for forgiveness and then heal you and make you whole. Luke chapter 17, uh, beginning in verse 1, Jesus talks about this. As there's this, this is several years later after Leviticus we're reading. This is in the New Testament. There's still this sin of leprosy. There's still this sin of people with arms falling off and limbs because indeed this did talk about that as well and rotting of flesh and, and they were isolated and they were, they were called unclean. And it says in verse 11 of Luke chapter 17, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria. Samaritans were already ice, off, off scour people. They were half breeds. They were half, you know, every one of us comes from so many different generations. We could be called Samaritans, if you will. We're not pure Jewish people of Jewish lineage, you know, the chosen people. We were all Gentiles, if you will. But these Samaritans were even worse than Gentiles. They were half-breeds, half-Jew, half. And they were already isolated. But they says as he's going through this area, verse 12, And as he entered into a certain village, he met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. In verse 13, it goes on and says, And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. They couldn't bypass and do it another way. They had to come the only way. We can only come through the way of Jesus Christ. And these had to still follow before Christ was risen from the dead to be that high priest on their behalf. Still had to follow what was said. And he says to them, Go to the priest to see. Remember, they already knew. They were already condemned. They already had been examined by the priest before. They were already diagnosed as being lepers. They already had the physical evidence of being sinners completely. In other words, leprosy. And their body was decaying. So they're like, they're thinking to Jesus, this had to take faith to go back to the priest to be re-examined. And he says, and when they saw him, he said unto him, go, go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. On the way to get examined, their bodies were starting to grow back. Their bodies were already turning clean. Their bodies were turning perfect. And, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. So the others continued in religious way, continued to go into the way to go to the priest. And as they were obeying God, obeying the commandment of Jesus, they were being healed by Jesus, the true high priest the priest of Melchizedek, godhood priesthood. And, they, and one of them saw this, and only one of them turned back to be with Jesus, turned back away from the law to come to the mercies and the graces that come through the Lord Jesus Christ to do what? It says, turn back and with a loud voice glorify God. Truly what God wants of, from all of us is to glorify him. And he fell down on his face and his feet at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks and he, was, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But, were there, but where are the nine? There are not, uh, they are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith in God and him to make you righteous. The faith that God is the giver of good life. The faith that you came, you asked me first and foremost to cleanse you from sin, to turn this. And then you walked in obedience to me. And now you've been cleansed. You came and gave glory to God because of that. You, the Samaritan, the offcast, were the one that came back. How many of us feel that way? How many of us give glory and praise to God that he is the giver of life? He is the one that brings us into communion when we once were outcasts. 
that he is the one to examine you daily to make sure there's no sin and then to allow an opportunity for us to confess to him to clean to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and to and to to send you off again not to be an outcast but to go live go continue to do the will of god go and some of us may feel like we're no good for god's ministry well he he sends you out because of the work that he's done in you to make you clean but are are you there are you examining are you hearing what he says and saying this is sin and and lord forgive me of this wash me of this cleanse me of this and if so it's done it is finished he said on the cross go some of you want to linger there in that state that you're no longer in and some of you okay this is the sad thing the lord comes and he cleanses you of the sin and rather than come back and give glory to him you just go on and skip no i don't need to go to church anymore i don't need to go to bible study i don't need to go into the light to be examined i don't need to go spread light so others can be healed i'm i'm good who cares about anyone else right who cares about god I don't need God anymore. And this is what's happening is people casting God out. And what are they doing, really? They're running out there into the world with other people who are contagious. And they're getting, they're getting these diseases. They're getting these things on them. And they're walking around thinking they have nothing. They're walking around thinking they're perfectly fine. And yet they're not worshiping God. They're not giving glory to God, which is a telltale sign that there's something wrong. You're walking in death. You're walking in darkness. Get back, come back, be examined. And so verse, um, so verse uh, 47 through 59 talks about the examining of the clothes and how your clothes can, can even get this, the clothes you wear and how you need to have those cleansed. And there's a process for that. And if they can't be cleansed, guess what they do with it? Burn it. Burn them, burn it, right? Get rid of it. And so uh, Revelation chapter three, verse five, Jesus states that he who overcomes this, um, will thus be clothed with white garments and who is he talking about if we read that chapter it says um unto the angel of the church of sardis write these things saith he that hath seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know thy works that thou hast a name that thou liveth and art but are dead be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die for I have not found the works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as a, to thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour that I come unto thee. Thou hast, few, thou hast few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled the garments, but they shall walk with me in white." For they are worthy. Okay, so the, there are many, there are some that are continuing in faith. They've not they've not fallen. They're continuing in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But then he says to those that he's warned, that have lost their faith in Christ, that have gone into the world and and are, and are walking in other ways and other things. He says, verse five: He that overcome, come back. He that comes and perseveres into the Lord. The same shall be clothed and not blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. The Lord is our defender and he is the one that will, that will defend every sin that you've been part of. Keep coming to him to cleanse. It's not that some sins are not unto, unto, um, unto death, unto salvation. In other words, it's not a rejection of Jesus Christ. But there are stripes even for Christians. There are there are consequences even for us. Sometimes the Lord may take you off the earth immediately because you're no you're of no good anymore because you're you're bringing death and sin to people. You you're more of a minister of Satan than you are of God, right? You're no longer in things. Or maybe he he'll allow other things to come upon us. Things that are bad. There are there are ailments that come because of sin right because we're we're entangling ourselves in these things and god's not going to be mocked and he's coming back and he wants to find us ready we want to be found filled in the joy of the lord we want to be found in the light of the lord we want to find be found shining light to, to all those around us amen and helping people healing people because of the power of the lord isaiah we're going to close with this one isaiah 1 because we don't want to leave on a bad on a bad note right but it, but it, it's a serious note but on a but on a good note isaiah 1 verse 18 says come now and let us reason together saith the lord thou though thou sins be as scarlet they shall be made white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be 
as wool. So the Lord Jesus Christ has made a way to make us pure and spotless, leperless, right? <laughs> or without without the, the physical ailments, but more importantly, God's looking for the eternal being of us, right? Our spiritual sin, the spiritual diseases can be cured and, and we can walk away whole, completely, only not walk away. Turn back and say, I want to stay with you, Lord. Where else would I go? Thou have the words of life. You are the healer. You are the redeemer. You are the kinsman redeemer, right? You're my, you're my family now. You're my Lord, my Savior. You're my Father in heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for the ways that you've made for us to, to get out of sickness, to get out of the disease of sin, and, and Lord, to come to cleansing and to be reclothed and to be reunited into fellowship and not have to wear masks and not have to run around in condemnation of our own self saying unclean and, and, and feeling shameful among others, but to walk in confidence. Lord, just like the man who was blind who came before the Pharisees and, and, and told them, I don't know, all I know is I once was blind, but now I see, and then came back later to tell them about Jesus. Help us to be those witnesses, those lights. Help us to, to constantly examine um, that we're walking in the right way and, and to come to the, to the freedom we have and forgiveness and mercies that you've given us to be cleansed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.